Northern Wisconsin used to be mining country, up until 50 years ago when the last mine here closed. But it looked like that was about to change. This is the Gogebic Range. It contains 20% of the country's known iron ore reserves. That kind of resource doesn't get overlooked forever. And the nearby town of Hurley was anticipating a return to its days of past glory. It's St. Patrick's Day 2012 in Hurley. It seems like everyone in town is on Silver Street, the main drag in town. Even amidst the festivities, people are happy to talk about their mining heritage. What this entails is the Kogibic uh, Pinocchi uh, Iron Range with all of the, the mines that close their days of opening and their days of closing. So, now where was? Unfortunately, they're all closed now, and uh, this re this is probably the heyday of the. Uh, Iron Range. My grandfather used to work in the mines. He worked there for like 30 some years, you know, and that's how he provided for his family, you know, after the World War II. He was in the war, and so that's how he made ends meet. And once they shut down, yeah, it just kind of sucked because there's a lot less jobs now, and then like Ironwood actually like really died down. There were a lot more people, and now it's just kind of like a dying town. and. Even Otsunagan, like I hear their places are closing down and it's, it's kind of sad. When the miners got done with what they were doing, they came to Hurley to unwind, do what they were doing, and then went back straight to work. Bloggers too. And this town has been here forever. It's down to 31 bars, back up from 27 from last year, but it's still going strong, as strong as it can. A lot of people drinking these days. Yeah. If all else fails, nobody has any money, but they still got to do something with their problems. When the mines left, Hurley began its decline. Today, its median household income is $24,500. The unemployment rate is 12.8%. The underemployment rate is impossible to know. But many young people like Scott Alkin scrape by with various part-time jobs. Uh, I DJ, bartend. I work in my dad's garage. No, it's a local garage in town. Even in the past few years, it's actually gotten significantly worse. Significantly worse. A lot of people are moving. A lot of people for better jobs in bigger cities because they can't find anything up here. About a year ago, a company called Gogebic Taconite, or GTAC, moved into an office on Silver Street. It wanted to open a new mine a few miles out of town on the Gogebic Range. And so we came up, we looked it over. Uh, it looks pretty clean. It's, uh, it's, it's a large enough deposit that it will allow us to put a medium-sized plant in and run it for, uh, for many years, enough time to get your investment back. GTAC soon created the city's first mining job in generations. Uh, they were looking for somebody to take care of some of the drafting work and they talked to a few people they knew locally and one of them told me to come in. I was able to stop by, give my resume and I fit the bill so I was able to get a job. Once approved, the mine was projected to operate for at least 35 years and as long as a century. It would bring in 2,800 construction jobs for the first two years and about 700 permanent operator jobs with an average compensation of about $80,000 a year. I work at a gas station in Wakefield. So, I mean, if the mine opens up, I would definitely try to get a job there. I actually work in Minnesota. I live in Iron Belt, and I work in Minnesota because there is no job around here. What do you do out there? I log over there, run equipment. How long? And if the mine came here, I could quit that job if I wanted to and run equipment here locally where I could be home during the week. The mine would also mean millions of dollars in tax revenue and billions for the state's economy. Even for people here who don't want to work in the mine, they know how a local economy works. Sure, maybe I won't be able to go down there and apply and get hired to drive trucks or whatever or actually work for the mine itself. I might not be able to get a job doing that. But 
in return restaurant jobs all these people that are making money from the mines are going to be spending money in this area so uh, neighboring jobs the clothing places the, the bars the restaurants they're all going to get so much more income that comes back from it which will in return get put into the community because everybody who owns a business here lives here and they're proud of living here and they want to stay here they don't want to pack up and move you know and that'll bring just more money into the area which would be good for everyone but there was a problem from the beginning current wisconsin law made opening a new iron mine all but impossible the timelines for the permitting process were completely unpredictable and could stretch on for years that would make it impossible for gtech to attract investors for the project the current law, and it's still the current law, says that you have to give a notice of intent in which then the company has to sit from 12 to 18 months while the state decides what it is you're going to study. Well, that's, that's not good business. I mean, a mining company only makes money when it's mining. And if you're sitting around waiting for the state to come up with, with what it is you need to study, then there's an issue. Uh, so once again, we were looking at proposing legislation that says, we tell you we want to start, you sit down with us, we go through the list of things that need to be studied, and we start studying now. We take that 18 months and we get rid of it. I think that was introduced in the law you know, years ago as a delay tactic, and I think that's what the opposition sees. Is if you delay it, companies get tired of spending money and get nothing out of it, they leave. And that's, that's pure business. I mean, you, don't, you wouldn't go out here and set up a, a, a convenience store on the corner and not sell gas for four years because no one would supply your store and you would never get it up off the ground or a Walmart or a grocery store. You don't build the building, stock the shelves, but say, no, we're not going to sell any food for a while because we have to wait. Uh, delay taxes are, are, are what's knocking us out. And so what we did is we, we made some suggestions and, and made some proposals. And essentially, they, they, the idea of eliminating and removing the delays yet still maintaining the environmental integrity of the standards were all there. A bill was introduced that addressed the company's concerns. It left environmental standards in place, but regulatory agencies would have to work from a set timeline, and outside groups would not be able to sue to stop the mine. It was met with fierce opposition. <laughs> A hearing was held in Milwaukee, over 300 miles away. The Bad River Band of the Chippewa Tribe claimed the mine would pollute the entire region. We are the ones that are going to be drinking contaminated water when you, when you talk about groundwater contamination. It's kind of a cruel cool hoax to pretend that this is going to create jobs. This is not about jobs. This is about changing, making radical changes to the state's mining, water quality protection laws in it, that would affect an area that is known around the world, Lake Superior, the Apostle Islands, the Bad River Reservation. These are places that people come to from all over the world because of the quality environment. There's so many pieces in this legislation that represent to me a giveaway of the natural resources of the state of Wisconsin and ultimately a giveaway that are going to come to settle on the people of the Bad River Band of Lake Superior Chippewa and that's completely unacceptable. Some lawmakers were opposed to the mining bill from the outset. This bill raises major concerns for me in that it does not protect our environment, it will not protect the other economic drivers in the area, and it could end up creating significant problems for our state. Representative Shaber from Appleton claimed the mine would create a boom and bust cycle in the area, it would hurt tourism jobs, and the area did not have an adequate workforce. If the population in the area is older than average, Who's going to be the worker? Back in Hurley, people rolled their eyes. Most of the action was happening in other places. Other people were talking about our lives and our jobs and, and whether we have a right to our future up here. Well, our politicians would come here. They know our county was for it, so they kind of appeased them. And then they'd go to Mellon and have a whole different version of what the heck was going on. The biggest thing that we got going here is exporting our kids. We got one of the finest schools in the state of Wisconsin, the best asset we got. And we're shipping them out because we got nothing for them. I had one son graduate early, went to Phoenix for school, came back and always looking at leaving again because there is nothing here. You don't think your kids will stick around? No. Why should they? 
The area's biggest export today are their kids. They educate them and they leave because there are no jobs. So we look at the seventh and eighth graders today in these school systems and we say, these are our employees of the future. These are the ones that, that can come and take the jobs. Uh, they don't necessarily have to go off to college and then find a job somewhere else. Some of them that, can, that want to be professionals can become engineers, they can become accountants, and those do take four-year degrees. Uh, some of them that want to be welders can go to tech school and pick, pick up how to draw a bead and, and, and lay it out. Those are good. And then some that, that, that may not find school to be their thing, they're the ones that become equipment operators because they have hand-eye coordination. Uh, they have a, a, a desire to be outside because that's what our equipment operators are doing. Uh, and it, it's not a prerequisite that they have to have these, these, these degrees. Uh, and it gives them a chance to get that job that they can be employed for 35 years. That's a, you know, that's a career. As for concerns about pollution, it's important to note this type of mining does not require the use of chemicals. GTAC's president, Bill Williams, shows how the process works with magnets. So you take the magnet and you pass it on and the rocks attach themselves to it. And that's all it's going to take is to crush those and separate the sands from the iron and be able to separate it. But opponents say the rock itself could have dangerous compounds that would be released by mining. And the key to this today is that once you've done the chemical characteristics of the rock, if there is a bad character out there, a bad player, you don't get a permit. So it's not, you know, the legislation that was being proposed didn't assure a permit, it just set up a process. And today you've got enough scientists in the state organizations that, and in the federal organizations that say, if you can't engineer a solution, no permits issued. People here do talk about the need to protect the environment, but they don't buy the idea this proposed mine would cause any pollution at all and they have history to draw on. I mean, this area was built on mines. This area is here because of mines. If they were that, and they didn't do anything to take care of the environment then. I mean, if they do something now and actually say, I mean, I don't believe everything they say, but I mean, if they can actually do it as cleanly as they can do it, I mean, there's still people, I don't see people walking around Ironwood with three, four heads and stuff like that, you know, because of the pollution from the old mines. And if you've looked around, you can see old tailing piles and, and remnants of the old mining days, and it hasn't hurt anything. I mean, there's a big tailing pile in Montreal right next to the Montreal River, and water flows right from that tailing pile into the river, and the river's one of the best trout fishing places around you know so it, it it doesn't it hasn't hurt anything and I think uh, people fail to realize that we don't but uh, there's certainly enough safeguards in there between the EPA and the DNR had never had a problem with the problem and EPA was right here to regulate it and uh, we have faith here in, in our regulatory agencies otherwise why are we paying tax dollars to support these people and we got our legislators are saying these people are incapable of handling their own jobs and the jobs that they're supposed to do for, our, for their own citizens of the state. Other closed mining sites in the area have naturally filled with water, crystal clear water. As a matter of fact, Ogibic Water Authority is starting a new project over here in Michigan where 35,000 people are getting their actual drinking water from the Chicago mine, which is an abandoned uh, uh, open pit mine in Wakefield. And in this open pit mine has passed all of the DNR regulations of the state of Michigan, which are very strong, and and plus federal regulations. So, oh, so you could drink out of these out of these pit mines. Absolutely, we have no fish that glow in Iron County. Everything is fine, even when the mines were working. Uh, cattle were drinking right from where the refuse was coming from the mines, and it's just rock, as far as much as we see it. We've had no ill effects from a hundred years of mining. Opponents also stress the blight a new mine would cause on the landscape claiming it would destroy tourism in the entire region. The area that we're looking at was about oh, a four to four and a half mile stretch that you would be able to put about a three and a half mile long pit in. Now, of course, people hear three and a half mile long pit, oh my gosh, well, that's over 35 years. So what you're, what you're looking at is probably a, a part of that initially for the first 15, 16 years, and then you've got the second part of that for the next 15, 16, 18 years and you take the waste rock from one and you backfill it into the other. So essentially, you're, you're putting the ridge back up as, as you mine forward. Not even hardly a speck on the map. That mine's gonna take a chunk of land about 
this big out of the horizon you know if you look at it like that it's yeah. it's just a small little area local trapper alan lardnoise knows this area well although the mine could affect some of his trapping sites he and his trapping partner still support it if they come in here and put this mine in look at all i mean we put 90 traps in this run you know in in this area here alone we probably got 40 of them or more you know, I said to him, I was like, hey, if they come put this mine in, I mean, does that bug you? Because you're going to be losing all your trapping spots. And uh, he's like, we need it. Bring it in. Bring the mine in. He's like, I'll find new spots. That's no, that's no big deal at all. You know, no worries there. The people probably might be for the mine, but the city is part of Senator Bob Jouk's district, a Democrat from Poplar who is not about to support the original bill. I, I've said for over a year that I support responsible mining. But if one supports responsible mining, one should insist, as the public does, on a responsible mining law that protects our environmental standards. In the Wisconsin Senate, the Republicans hold a one-vote majority. Republican Senator Dale Schultz, however, expressed reservations about the mine in the original proposal. They have legislative findings that suggest that a, a Ferris mine simply is not uh, uh, one that we have to worry about acid uh, seepage from. That's just simply uh, not the case. And we know that because of what we know about the overburden in this area. And to, at this point, give somebody a, a uh, green light, I think is just unwise. Schultz and Jauk worked together to draft an alternative mining bill. One that did not ensure a set timeline and allowed outside groups to delay the permitting process in court. It also required the company to pay $25 million up front in taxes. Yeah, usually it's the other way around. They're getting tax credits or they're getting some sort of incentive to come here. I, you know, I've heard some, some people downstate, in the, especially in the southwest corner of the state, actually say, you mean here's a company coming in that's putting up 2800 construction jobs for two years and then putting in 700 operating jobs for 35 years and you're not whining and dining them? My God, all you're doing is hitting them in the gut. What's this, where's the sense to this? Where we can offer a hundred million dollar package to a company over in Superior and then at the same time turn around and, and say, you know, we, we, we can't let a mine come in here because it could pollute. As the legislative session in Madison drew to a close, Representative Robin Voss of Burlington and Senator Alberta Darling of River Hills drafted a compromise bill. Supporters of the mine hoped Democrat Senator Tim Carpenter from Milwaukee would provide the 17th vote needed for passage. Milwaukee has factories that make mining equipment that would benefit from the new mine, so it made sense. However, when the bill came up on the Senate floor, Carpenter voted against it. The mining bill was dead, and GTAC announced it was going to pull out of Wisconsin. The residents of Hurley were devastated. There was such a downer, you didn't even want to walk on the street. That was really disappointing, yeah. Yeah, kind of pulled your heart right out. It's just absolute devastation. Uh, it's hard for us to understand here that grew up with mining and we've seen what mining meant. I graduated from Hurley in 61 when the uh, last mine closed, the Montreal mine here. And through the 50s we saw the prosperity that uh, brought about us with the good mining jobs and it was just a shame that we got caught in such of a turmoil now with the recall and everything else. And they tried to make GTAC, the mining company, out to be the villain and they used that as their propaganda through the whole thing when really Jauk just didn't want it from the beginning. He said he didn't want it from the very get-go and we thought maybe some sense could have been knocked into him, but it never never happened. All that mining com company wanted was a reasonable timeline, a real timeline, not an open-ended forever people can beat drums and protest until the end of time timeline. About three weeks after he cast his vote against the mining bill, Senator Chow came to Hurley for a listening session. There was no question it would be a hostile environment. During the first 45 minutes, Jauk tried to convince the crowd he did the right thing. It is easy for individuals to simply blame politics for everything. Now, politics is part of our life, certainly part of our business where we have the responsibility of trying to respond to people who have different points of view. 
and you have to choose the right and responsible way to, to uh, reach solutions. When the crowd got a chance to speak, they let Jow have it. You could have retired a year up here. Um, instead, I don't think that's going to be the case. I noticed that Republicans and Democrats alike are united in the fact that they're really ticked. And I guess the time has come. Unfortunately, uh, you may be the person that we have to use as an example. Uh, hey. uh, if that's what it takes to get the rest of everybody's attention, that's what we're going to do. And uh, I guess that's all I have to say. Go ahead. The crowd did not just express resentment. They had done their research and followed the issue closely. Jalk was soon cornered by the facts. I look at the sulfide issue first, that's been a red herring. The, the water at the headwaters of the Bad River, the pH is 7.15. By the time it gets down to US2, downstream, it's at 9.50. And so it's very alkaline. If there was going to be a problem with sulfides in this area, it'd be coming from all the ore piles. There's millions of tons of ore all around the headwaters of all these pristine rivers leading to Lake Superior. Millions of tons along Highway 77, Montreal, Tyler Forts. You look everywhere. There's a big river. There's ore piles. If there was going to be a problem with the ore, the EPA and the DNR in Michigan and Wisconsin, Army Corps of Engineers, would have quarantined this area as a Superfund site. That hasn't happened. We're still here. When the woman was sitting over in Mellon worried about her well-being drive, legislators sat there and listened, and they empathized, and I understand that. No one stood up and said, well, you know, it appears that the company may have a solution to the groundwater issue. It appears we may be able to bring water in from a different watershed to ease or alleviate. The fact is the Darling Boss Amendments covered so many things that also included private wells. And the fact that the company would be held responsible if private wells were affected. So the, the fact of the matter is, SB 488 with Darling Boss Amendments is extremely close. What it appeared to us to have happened was, it appeared that our representative didn't want to have anything to do with anything that the assembly would put together. And it appeared that our representative didn't really want to compromise. Darling Boss was a total of what? 17? I'm sorry, 22 amendments. Schultz job had zero. Who's compromising? So why did it happen? Well, perhaps the reason is political. I have here a Scott Walker recall petition, not only signed by you, but circulated by your wife. <laughs> Wisconsin grandsons of liberty, and we, the people of the republic, I can also tell you that most of your Democratic colleagues also signed a petition, as well as Representative Jan Buley. And Representative Milroy, who is with you today, not only signed, but he also circulated petitions. And now you say you want to work with the governor and create a bipartisan bill. <laughs> It, it is a political world. You can get along with people in government. I get along very well with the governor's staff. I get along well with the governor. We talk, we have talked about a number of issues that are important. When he, I, you know, I did sign the petition to recall the governor and I'll bet he'd campaign against me in an election too. But we have a responsibility to govern. And when he and I sat down for 40 minutes, there wasn't an ounce of disagreement about the desire to ask outside individuals to try to see if they couldn't come up with a new consensus using pieces of the Assembly Bill and the Senate Bill. The bill was dead. The company announced it was leaving. Now their senator wanted to form a special commission to study the issue. At this point, the people in Hurley were fed up with politics and politicians altogether. Too much politics, they don't care about anybody. It's all politics. They don't want 
the governor to have any good things happening to them right now because they want to get rid of them. So they're not going to let anything happen. Tom is Scott Alkin's father, and like any father, he worries about his son's future. There's no opportunity here for Scotty unless he goes into business for himself and, I mean, does something like that. He DJs at, at, at parties, he tends bar, he, he you know, cuts grass, does, you know, does all the, he's 27 years old and he's still out doing people's shrubbery for something to do. Scott is getting married in the fall and he scraped together enough money to buy a house. I figured it's time to change the name on the house. Oh, yeah, I suppose. Bought a house last November in Besmer. Yeah. It's had the same name on it since I bought it <laughs> and it's not my name. What would you get it for, like 20? <laughs> Under. Well, wow. just, just above. Yeah. Yeah. Even as he makes preparations to begin raising a family, Scott knows it will not be easy the way things have been going in Hurley. Hopefully, hopefully something goes in the right direction so we won't have to worry about our kids too much. Meanwhile, Senator Jauk blames the company. I'm sorry the company chose to leave. They did not, they, and you can say whatever you want, but I am disappointed they chose to leave. And they didn't have to at 8 o'clock at night. I wish they were as committed to staying here and letting us work through this very difficult process as the faith that you and Iron County put in that company. They made their decision. Now we have to do what we can to get the law passed, and that's where my attention and effort will be. But the company did not say it was leaving. The company said it was done paying ransom to all the different politicians who kept asking for more. And when they said no to all of that, we said, you know, we're, we're basically done negotiating. We've told you what it is that, that, that would encourage industry, not just us, what industry would come to the state. Uh, we were asked, what it is we would see with environmental and permitting, and we also made those points clear. We are not the only ones that were playing that. There, was, there were departments within the state that were adding to this as well. But when that message came to us and said, no, we're not ready to change the laws to encourage mining here, we said, we're done negotiating. We didn't say we were gone, we just said we're done negotiating. We'd like to support, we'd like to thank all the people that did give us support. and. If law ever changes where it becomes attractive for industry again, give us a call. The people of Hurley are siding with the company. He totally did not represent our area. He represented the tribes, especially in interest in environmental groups. There's a huge base of them in Ashland with Northland College and everything. And not that we don't want to protect the environment. None of us who wanted this mine wanted that. We, we want to keep our environment too. But we, we realize and we believe that the two can go hand in hand. We've seen it happen historically, so it's stupid to say that it can't. We've talked with GTAC and the people of GTAC have been wonderful to work for the city of Hurley. They've asked for nothing, they've opened their own offices here. Uh, they've been great neighbors, great supporters of everything in the community, the Chamber of Commerce and everything. So if, if they move out, it'll be just very devastating to the Hurley area. Ultimately, most everyone in Hurley is bitter about the whole experience. The general sentiment up here among anybody who has been keeping up with anything since the beginning of this whole process is shame on the politicians for not doing their jobs. I, I guess our timing was poor in that, that we got here when there was a polarization that took place. Uh, one side dug in their heels and, and they weren't going to give or concede or, or, or uh, allow the credit to be shared. And, and that's a shame because this, this isn't about politics. This wasn't about Democrats. This wasn't about Republicans. This was about the people of Wisconsin. This is about the people in northern Wisconsin. Stop screwing with the mine. Let it happen. We got screwed. Yeah, this has been very, very political. bunch of BS. I hate to say that on film for you, but it's BS. It needs to happen and happen quick. If mining isn't the answer, then the politicians, since they're all so bright, maybe they ought to figure something else out. Maybe there's something else that could go on up here.